Hello and welcome to this video in the Lockdown Learning Series where we're going to see how you can share a single effect across multiple tracks. Now you may be saying, why on earth would I do that? And there's a couple of good reasons. One of them is that all of everything that Cubase does really is maths. So your computer's processor has to do thousands, hundreds of thousands of sums per second to play the audio that you've got. And depending on what kind of computer you've got, or even not depending on what kind of computer you've got, at some point it will reach a limit. So that limit may be way, way ahead of where you are at the moment, but you'll probably find if you start adding lots of tracks and lots of effects, your computer will go no, and you'll start getting glitches in the output and so on. So at that point, you need to cut down on what you're doing. So we'll look at a couple of ways of doing this later on in the series. But this one means you can share an effect between multiple tracks. Now, there's also a good audio mixing stroke engineering reason for this is often we want to put the same effect on multiple tracks. And if you wanted to do that as inserts, as we saw in the last video, let's say you changed your mind about it and you wanted to change settings or you wanted to change the whole effect, you would have to go to each track, which... If you've got four, is a bit of a pain. But if you've got 44 tracks, that's like an hour's work to make a small change, which you're probably not going to do. So what we're going to look at is how you can use a thing called effects channels and sends to share one effect across multiple tracks. So what we do is we take the audio from each of these tracks and send it to that single effect. Now, Cubase has made this easier to set up in a number of ways. So there's there's loads of different ways to do this. And I don't want to get too, again, too into the weeds with this kind of thing. So the way I'm going to look at is if you want to do it to all the tracks, you would select all the tracks you want to do it to. So I'm going to click on the first track. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and click on the last track. And you see they're all selected now. And then I'm going to right click or on a Mac, two finger tap. And then... Under Add Track, we can add an effects channel to select a channel. So notice the effect gets shortened to FX because it's nearly effect. It's like text speak from your grandma. So we pick effects channel to selected channels. And here is where we pick our effects. So there's some important things you need to do here. First thing is pick an effect. So I'm going to pick a reverb. So under reverb, we've got two. We've got Roomworks and Roomworks SE. I'm just going to pick Roomworks because it's, it's pretty good for what it is configuration stereo okay we don't want a mono i'm not sure why the default is that and then the last thing we need to do is give it a name so i'm going to call it reverb because otherwise it'll get called something like fx track one which is a bit miserable so we click that and a few things happen firstly our reverb appears and we will come back to that so i'm going to close that secondly if we scroll down we can see we now have an effects channel folder with reverb inside it Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out a bit so we can see that. So that's where we find our reverb. So just like on the previous video, if we put an insert in on drums, it would be there. On the reverb channel, it says an insert there, and we can see there's our room work. So if you want to get back to it, go to the reverb channel, make sure inserts is visible, and then click the E, and then there's our room works, which we'll come back to later on. The last thing that Cubase has done for us is on every channel, it's created a send. So you can see here in the audio send section and exactly the same in the send destination section here on the channel settings window, it's the same control. We've got an amount that we're sending to the reverb. So here zero means what comes out is the same as what goes in. So it's just like the peak level we saw in the mix down video. It's generally measured in negatives, although here we can go positive, which isn't the case with the mix down if you don't want distortion. So here we can pick how much reverb is being sent or how much drum is being sent to the reverb. Sorry, I should word that really precisely. So there we would have pretty much none. In fact, none now. And as we go up, we get more and more. So this is about creating a relative balance. So if we wanted more reverb on the drums than we did on the other things we'd probably just turn down the other things so i'm going to put that back to zero you can double click and type in a number if you want to be super precise and maybe we'd want less on the bass so we could turn that down um less on the strings but not less than you know the bass and then probably not much on the melody as well Okay, this tends to create a space, but also depth. So things with less reverb on seem to be nearer to the listener. 
you can also do this in the mixer. So if I open up the mixer, if we click on the sends bar here, you can see there are those. And if you want to adjust relative levels, this is probably the place to do it because then it's easy to see what's going on. The last control we'd need to worry about is how much reverb we're putting in the mix. So we've got this fader here and we'll see that in action in a second. So if I play the song with my crazy mismatched reverb amount, okay, we didn't want it to be in an oil drum, okay? So there's, there's multiple things to juggle here. So in the case of the reverb, I might like the sound of the reverb, but that might just be too much. So if I go back to the mixer and hit play, I can bring that down. It's much more subtle but we've got the old problem where the bass drum just doesn't sound great. So I'm going to turn the reverb down a bit on the drums. And often bassy reverb isn't great. So just having some, some reverb on there and often turning it down to a point where you can't really hear it, but then when you mute it, you realize it is in there. So if we go back to the beginning, it's definitely there, but it's not really overpowering. But if you turn it off, I'll go back to the beginning. So it's 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 not really in your face, but when you turn it off, you realize it's not there. But we might want to alter the character of the reverb as well. So we go back to the reverb track, click E on Reamworks, and then we can either play with the controls or we can pick one of the presets. Now, the one thing we should do on this, if you're ever using it as a send, so if it's in an effects channel, turn the mix up to 100% because then you just get just the effect sound when you turn that up rather than anything else. So that will, yeah, you, see, you can hear now we've got more reverb, but that's fine. So we can turn the levels down. I'm gonna do it here. Just going to cycle around that. So you can hear even at that low level, it's there, but then we can edit that here and we can alter the reverb time. So if we wanted a big reverb, hear that massive great big reverb etc but roomworks is quite nice because you can just you can just play around with the controls and get a hang of, of what it's doing but this this would be used whenever you've got an effect you want to share across multiple channels which typically will be a reverb but sometimes there'll be other things and you can add add extra ones so if we wanted to add a delay that we were going to use across multiple channels again the easiest way to do it is to highlight the tracks you want it to apply to and then Add an effects channel to selected channels. Let's pick delay this time. So we'll pick stereo delay and we'll call it all delay. Oh, we'll call it all unable to type. And there's our delay, which is now going to be on everything, which obviously at the moment is going to be crazy because it's going to be really, you can hear that. So that's this delay here playing and you can see it in the project window playing. But then we could turn that down and play around. That's just a demo to show you. You can put as well up to eight sends, kind of. You can have more if you're not using the same ones on every channel, but that's you know one of the many uh, sort of nerdy complexities you can get into later on. But that's how to share an effect across multiple channels. Um, so generally you'd want to do that with ones where it's going to be the same effect on more than one channel because it cuts down on processing and all the other reasons as seen before. But... I hope you find that useful and we'll see you soon.